I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you Universal Church, leading people to intelligent faith. Do you know who Jesus is? For the blind, he is the light. For the hungry, he is the bread of life. For the thirsty, he is the fountain of living waters. For the sick, Jesus is the cure. For the lonely, the faithful friend. For the accused, the advocate. For the lost, the savior. For those making random decisions, Jesus is the way. For the deceitful, the truth. For the dead, he is life. And I want to welcome all of you to our Let There Be Light program today, Thursday. And, well, the number that you see there is our helpline number. If it's your first time here with us, I want to explain to you how you can use that number. You can either call or send us a message, a WhatsApp, a text, audio, or video message, explaining your situation. And there, there, there is a... a a uh, team of pastors available to help you, okay, to call you back, to reply your message, because we are here with this purpose. We want to help you. We want to offer you our spiritual help. There are situations that we understand it's beyond what a doctor, a lawyer, um, a specialist uh, can do for you even your family, even your friends, some things only the mighty hand of God can solve, can bring a way out. And that's why we are here. And the video that you just saw, this message saying that Jesus is everything, indeed he is everything. He is not an option for those who are suffering. Actually, he is the solution. Uh, medicine or uh, lawyers or uh, doctors and um, judge or friends or money, uh, all these are options, right? All these are options. We could say human resources. The human resources, they are options that we can use when we have a situation, we have a problem. However, faith is not an option. Faith is the solution, always. Jesus is the solution. So if you want to find a solution for your situation, you need to understand that. And if you are willing to use that faith that you have there inside of you, and you have it even even though you think, you may think you do not have, but I can assure you 
even without knowing you, but I assure you that you have faith there inside of you. And I would like to invite you to test that faith. You need to test that faith because when you test that faith is when you realize that inside of you, the solution or what will bring to you the overcoming of your suffering is right there, is there, and it's named faith. So watch this testimony because after it, I want to share something here in the Word of God and explain it for you. Faith helped me to become who I am today. Having a Bible verse and holding on to that verse and saying, God, you said that you were going to do this thing. So if I do this, you have to do that. That's how I started to use my faith. So from small things to big things, my faith is constantly being exercised. My life at the moment is all around peaceful. Of course, I have issues and problems and things that I need to solve every day. I have peace in everything. I have joy in everything. I don't worry about anything. So that's how I am at the moment. My life has been transformed now coming up to four years. I had advice. I had people that were there and willing to help me, but I learned more by doing things that I had learned. So instead of asking questions or speaking, I had to put my faith into practice. From the very first week that I was in the church, I learned how to use my faith because I saw that by determining something, by saying, okay, this is what the word of God says. If I do this, it has to happen. Before, the problems that I had were peer pressure, wanting to be like other people, not fitting in, thinking that you're the only one that was left out. I compared myself a lot to people that I was around, whether it was friends or on social media. A lot of the time I was doing things that were completely out of my comfort zone. In my mind, I knew I'm, I don't belong here or I shouldn't be doing this, but because I wanted to fit in, I would do things. And this all stemmed from as how I grew up as a child, always feeling neglected, always feeling that people didn't care about me. And it wasn't as if anything was actually happening. It was just things in my mind that I kept with me that all. Oh, I grew up without a father as well. And because that was what it was on the outside, I was angry on the inside, very angry. And my natural reaction to things was to hit, was to fight, was to punch. And this anger came from the fact that I didn't have that care and that love and attention that I wanted or needed. My mum was a mother of four, so she had to divide herself between four children that equally needed her attention. I found out about the Universal Church through my sister. I lived in Ireland at the time and I came to visit my family for the winter holidays and they had already started going to the church a couple of weeks and I went with them, but I didn't like the church because I didn't understand. I went back to uni and I forgot about the Universal Church, I didn't think anything about it. But when I came back in the summertime, my sisters were still going, so I would come with them. I heard the message for the very first time. I heard what the Word of God was saying. Things were changing in my life. I, I was getting to a point where I couldn't take the life that I was living anymore. I couldn't take the pain, the anger, the things that I had kept from my childhood. It made sense. God had literally directed me because he had been telling me to, like different things that I had stopped doing, that I had started changing. That was when everything made sense for me. The Universal Church as a place for me, I learned how to use my faith in a way that I had never learned before. I grew up going to churches. I had never seen faith practically being shown to me. This is where I learned that, and I don't think I would have learned that anywhere else. To be universal for me is to think, to not just accept things for the way that they are. I know that God is real. I know how to use my faith, and I'm gonna do something about it. I'm gonna go to God, I'm gonna fight by using the word of God to see my life transform. That for me is to be universal. To learn how to use my faith properly, I started a chain of prayer. If I want to see results, I need to do exactly what the word of God says. That for me is how I learned how to use my faith. What faith means is it was about three months in total that I was here in London. When I went back to Ireland, I continued going to the church there. And within those three months, I had a testimony in my financial life. I was looking for accommodation for uni. I had a testimony in myself. I stopped being insecure and I saw myself growing. I saw myself not crying as much. I saw myself not being as sad, not being so low. And then in those four, three and a bit, nearly four months, I received the Holy Spirit. So saw results quite quickly and that's what made me keep going. As a universal person, because of the help that I received, I naturally want to go out and do more for other people. Reach out to people, it's inside of me. I, I, I can't turn it off and I can't stop it. Bringing people 
that love that God has for them because that's the love that I was searching for. And this is my daily life as a universal person. I didn't do this before because I didn't know God for myself, but now coming and experiencing it for myself, I want to give it to other people. I want to bring other people to know God and to have the joy that I have being here with God because I know who I am before God and I see myself now as someone that's joyful, someone that loves to have fun, someone that is peaceful in the presence of God. I may have bad days, I may have days where I'm not feeling so great, but it doesn't take away the peace that I have. It doesn't take away the joy that I have. Through my faith, I've conquered many different things from little testimonies in financial areas of my life. I've used my faith in terms of coming out of uni and going straight into a really good job. I have conquered through my faith a peace that I didn't know that I could have before and I've received the Holy Spirit by faith as well. I could never regret to become part of the Universal Church. It's not just about the building but it's the people, it's what you learn, it's how you experience God in a way that you've never experienced God before. It's probably the best decision I've ever made. It doesn't matter the reason. When it comes to envy, do not treat it as something normal. You may not know, but envy is not just the feeling of wanting what belongs to someone else. No, envy is a highly destructive evil spiritual burden, capable of acting in the physical and spiritual realms. You cannot prevent someone from envying you, but you can choose to be protected by the power of faith and thus neutralize all types of envy. Friday, we will have the National Day of Combat and Protection Against Envy. Join us at 7.30 p.m. Tenney Universal Church near you. I hope that you understood by the testimony of this person that God, again, He is not an option, but He is the solution. You can try anything, you can try many things, but the only one that will bring to you a permanently solution will be, will be God. And we, <clears throat> we spoke on our yesterday program about this verse here in Luke chapter 10, verse 17, when it says that the 70 disciples of the Lord Jesus returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. It was not their human power who would subject demons to them and they knew that they understood that that's why they said in your name and you may think but bishop that was that was the disciples how can i uh, even believe that the same can happen to me or i can do that nowadays well do you believe in the words of jesus you do so if you do, allow me to read to you another verse, okay? Another verse. When the Lord Jesus said this, and these signs will follow those who believe. So if you believe in the words of Jesus, you are included in these words that I'm going to read to you. I'm about to read something to you. And you are included here. He said, in my name, they will cast out demons, evil spirits, unclean spirits, whatever you want to name it, to name them. It's all the same. So nowadays, the same thing that happened had happened with the disciples many years ago. They saw those evil spirits 
they were causing suffering and issues like diseases, uh, mental uh, illnesses, and anxiety, and suicidal thoughts, and family issues, and many other things. All the troubles, all the suffering they saw, those evil spirits causing in the life of the people, they went to their cities, to their villages, to their homes, and they saw how those were suffering, those, those, those people were suffering, and by the name of Jesus, they were able to cast out those evil spirits from those people's life, the same thing, it will happen to you as well. Because somehow, evil is causing to you a suffering, and you know that. You know there are people who envy you. Oh, don't you know that? You know it. You know that what is happening in your house, it's not normal. The way that you and your husband, your wife, your partner, the way you, 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 uh, you deal with problems, the way your marriage is, you know it's not normal. You, you know that when you go to sleep, you feel weird things there inside your bedroom. You know there is a, there is a negative presence there which scares you. Right or wrong? You know there is something that is not right in your life. But you cannot live with that. You cannot allow yourself to continue or allowing that evil presence to be there in your life. You need to be free from that. And how will that happen? By the name of Jesus. And tomorrow, Friday, it's a special day in our church because every Friday, People, they come to us with spiritual burdens. You would be surprised with the amount of people that every Friday they come to our services. We have four services every single Friday, 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. And people, they come overwhelmed. They come burdened. They come sad. Others, they come with anxiety. Others, they come with uh, uh, mental issues. Others, they can sleep at night. Others with addictions. Several situations. And we know how to help them. And the same way that we have been helping these, those who have been coming to us on Fridays, we also want to help you as well. We want to help you. So tomorrow, I invite you to join us in one of those times because we are going to do exactly this. In the name of Jesus, whatever evil exists in your life, he will be subjected to us. Subjected to us. And in the name of Jesus, we will cast out that evil from your life. And you will notice the difference because the moment that an evil goes out of a person's life, Immediately, straight ahead, the person can feel the difference, the relief, the burden goes out as well. I'll be waiting for you in our church here in Liverpool. Our address is 153 Northumberland Street. Very, the very heart of the city, okay? Close to the Westfield Shopping Center. We have other branches in Blacktown, Chatswood, Brisbane, Dandenong, and Footscray. You just need to go to our website, uckg.org.au, and there you will find the addresses to all, all our locations. It's very easy for you to do that. And as well, our timetable with, the, with the, the times of the services and testimonies and events. Well, there's plenty of information there on our website. Again, uckg.org.au. The world we live in has undergone many transformations. Have you ever stopped to think for a moment how many people have passed through this earth? How many theories, philosophies and inventions have been created? The truth is that everything that exists today will disappear tomorrow into the sea of oblivion. There is only one thing that is resistant to time and can never be destroyed. The Word of God.
for millennia, Satan and his army have been tirelessly trying to exterminate the Holy Bible. A very small percentage of books can survive for over a quarter of a century. An insignificant number can survive for about a century. By this then, we can realize how different the Word of God is. Also, if we consider how this holy book has survived, it becomes even more of a surprising fact. Kings, emperors, notable people have all invested their power to exterminate the Bible and those who believe in it. However, all those who have tried to go against its word have gone and the Bible remains more alive than ever. Here are some examples. The emperor Diocletian in the 4th century ordered that all the Bible books were to be burned. He killed so many Christians and destroyed so many Bibles that when the Christian movement ceased for a period of time, he thought that he had killed the faith in Christ. After some time, he died with this delusion. In the 18th century, the French writer Voltaire had stated, in a hundred years, the Bible and Christianity will be wiped out of existence and will only be history. In 50 years, Voltaire was wiped out of existence and the Biblical Society of Geneva used his house to print and distribute thousands of copies of the Bible. In the 19th century, Robert Ingersoll declared, In 15 years, I will have the Bible buried in a cemetery. Well, 15 years later, Robert Ingersoll was buried in a cemetery. But the Bible still lives. Today, the devil uses modern concepts in order to ridicule it by placing the Bible on the same level as other books to try and convince that its speech is old and outdated. However, what we see is quite the opposite. What is written has never been so authentic. Actually, the Bible is much more than a mere book. It is the Spirit of God, of the Lord Jesus Himself. Therefore, if at this moment you place a challenge upon this word, its power will manifest in your life. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Univer Video, a road content of faith at the palm of your hand. Here we are going to teach you how to subscribe to the plans available so that you can access www.univervideo.com. Here you are going to select the plans and for $5.21 you can get two screens at once and for $6.59 you can get four screens at once. Now you press subscribe, insert now your location, followed by your phone number. After that, we are going to go to the payment method. So there, we have the options to add your card. So first, you type your name, second box, your card number, the expiry date, and the CVV. And after you complete this, you are ready to go. And once this is done, you can sign in again. And that's it. You are ready to explore a vast content of faith. Now, if you have an Android platform, or if you have an Apple device, you can also search for the app Univer Video. And so for this, you follow the same steps to subscribe like we've showed you before. by typing in your email address, your name, your password. Your card details, and that's it. You are ready, set to go. And watch this great content that's going to build your faith. Enjoy. Before we end our program, I have a very special 
good news to all of you. <laughs> good news to all of you. If you recall, we had at the beginning of September, the first Sunday of September, we gave the blessed oil to everyone for free in all our branches here in Australia. Well, the, on the 13th of this month of October, the 13th, next Sunday, not this one, the next one, the 13th of October, 9.30 and 7.30 a.m. in all our branches, we will refill the small bottle that you have received on that day, on the 8th of September, we are going to refill your bottle with oil, with more blessed oil, because we have left over a uh, 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 quantity of oil, and we are inviting everyone who came on that day to return, bring your small bottle with oil that you have received on the day, so we may refill it, okay? In that, so you can have more blessed oil and keep using it according to your faith, according to your needs. So don't miss 13th of October. It's going to be a special Sunday just for that. And, of course, the Sunday of the family, the blessing of the families, the blessing of all families, because we have the testimony in the Word of God, right at the beginning of the creation, that Adam and Eve, while they were living close to the tree of life, there in the, in the Eden Garden, there was, amongst all the trees there, there was one, there were one, which was very special, unique. <laughs> it was unique. It was called the tree of life. While they were there, their life was wonderful. They had no arguments with each other. There was no uh, illnesses, no uh, mental problems. Uh, there, was, there was peace. They were okay. They were perfect. They had a perfect life, the perfect marriage. And fortunately, we all know that because of their sin, their disobedience to God, they were casted out from the paradise, the garden of Eden. And consequently, they were no longer close to the tree of life. And how was their lives after that? Total destruction. Bitterness. Uh, well, they had children, and well, the siblings, they, were, they wouldn't get along each other. They had problems. You know that one killed the other one, brothers, no? And family problems, anger, rebellious behavior, many, many, many problems. And nowadays, who is the tree of life? the Lord Jesus. He is the tree of life. And he said these words, and I want to end our program repeating the words of Jesus, and tomorrow I'll be here to talk more about this. Because in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 5, the Lord Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Well, tomorrow I'll be back, same time, to talk about this verse here and what is going to happen on the 13th of October, that special families gathering that we will have in our church here in Australia, which is going to be a blessing for you, for your family. And on that day, especially on that day, we are going to refill the small bottle again that you have received with the blessed oil. You bring it with you to receive more of the blessed oil. Have a wonderful day and see you tomorrow.